In this video, I'm going to talk about radiative equilibrium, which is the idea of achieving thermal equilibrium when the only mechanism for exchanging energy is radiation. So given that we're talking about exchanging energy through radiation, let's begin with the radiative transport equation, which said that change in specific intensity at some distance is equal to the emissivity of a medium, J sub nu, minus the product of the specific intensity, I sub nu, with the extinction coefficient, A sub nu, which is describing how much of this background radiation is being absorbed by the medium. Now this equation is a little bit incomplete because it's missing the fact that intensity can change with time just as it changes with some distance through a cloud. For example, if I have some intensity entering on the left hand side of a cloud and it's hitting some patch of cloud here, before I've turned on this light source here, which maybe was just a star, J sub nu, the emissivity of, of this cloud may be very low. It might be a cold cloud and not really radiating any energy out of it. But as more and more energy gets absorbed by that cloud via this extinction coefficient, the temperature of the cloud is going to rise, and therefore the emissivity of this cloud is going to increase. So in order to capture the time derivative, I'm going to add one more term onto the rate of transport equation. Partial with respect to time of the specific intensity plus the partial derivative of specific intensity with respect to space. And why do I have a 1 over C here? Well, this 1 over C firstly has to be there to make units work out because here I'm taking intensity divided by a distance. Here I'm taking intensity divided by a time. I need to multiply by a time over distance. And in fact, this is just the differential piece that converts a time derivative into a space derivative knowing that your radiation is moving at the speed of light C. So this version of the radiative transport equation can accommodate the fact that we're not in a steady state. Now in the context of thermal equilibrium, we've also come up with the construct of a source function, which is the ratio of the emissivity to the extinction. And we've said in thermal equilibrium, local thermal equilibrium, S nu goes to a Planck function, becomes Planckian. Now the Stefan Boltzmann law says that the flux out of the surface of a black body is equal to the integral of the Planck function over bandwidth and solid angle, and that's equal to sigma t to the fourth. So this is the energy given off per time per surface area. And to evaluate our equilibrium, we should compare this, the energy flowing out over the surface of a black body versus time, to the energy coming in. So how do I evaluate the energy coming in? But we have to be a little careful here. In the radiative transport equation, we talk about an S, which is a specific direction through our cloud. But we can imagine in some cloud out there that we can actually have various sources around it illuminating it. And they all have different directions associated with them. So even though when we're looking over here at a cloud, we're interested in the specific intensity as it's propagated in a specific direction through this cloud, when we start talking about the energy flowing into or out of an area in this cloud, we need to consider all the energy flowing in. So to help us talk about that, I'd like to make a new construct called J sub nu, which integrates the specific intensity at some point in here over all solid angles that it comes in from. So now we're just not just talking about I sub nu along this S direction here, we're talking about I sub nu's coming in from all S's so from all angles around this patch. And in order to keep this the same units as specific intensity, I'm going to go ahead and divide by the surface area, the, the four pi star radians that we just integrated over. So this has the same units as specific intensity, but now we're going to call this the mean intensity. So the mean intensity is the average specific intensity that's coming in from any direction here. So if we want to talk about something with the same units as this flux here, we would integrate J sub nu, the mean intensity, over frequency, and we'd multiply by 4 pi. And that 4 pi is just undoing this normalization so that we're adding up the specific intensity around all directions. And just so we can compare sometimes to some other things in the literature, sometimes when we're integrating this over d nu, we'll just drop the new subscript and call that J. So when we're asking what do we compare to the emergent flux, 
coming off of some piece of a black body here. Well, it's the mean intensity integrated over solid angle and integrated over bandwidth. So sigma t to the fourth is our flux out, and 4 pi j is our flux in. And if we're going to be in radiative equilibrium so that we have no time derivative here, then these two quantities are going to need to be equal. Before I call these actually equal, there's one more detail I wanted to take care of. And that is that this extinction coefficient here is frequency dependent. So although we're able to talk about the ratio of the emissivity to the extinction coefficient at a particular frequency, and call that Planckian, and integrate all that up, at this particular frequency over here, where we're adding up the mean intensity from all directions and all these other sources as a function of frequency, that isn't always the same frequency as this one. Maybe to say this more clearly, you can imagine a situation where plotting specific intensity versus frequency, we have a black body style spectrum here, which represents how our energy is being radiated off of this piece of a black body here. But this background light could have a completely different spectrum. And in fact, most of the energy could be flowing in from a completely different area of the spectrum. And in this completely different part of the spectrum, we may have a completely different ability to absorb this energy. The alpha nu out here may not be anything close to the alpha nu over here. So we should really be talking about an alpha, we'll call it j, which is the average extinction over the spectrum represented by this background light. And this should be a weighted average, weighted by the brightness, so that we can really capture, on average, how much energy is flowing in here. So we'll define alpha sub j to be the integral of alpha nu j nu over j, which was the integral without alpha. So now we have an extinction coefficient that describes how much of the energy was actually absorbed here, even accounting for the fact that extinction can evolve versus frequency. And similarly, we'll want to compare that to, over here, an alpha b, which is the same weighted average for the black body spectrum. So now if I want to make these actually equal, so I can tell that we're, that we're at thermal equilibrium by matching the energy in versus the energy out versus time versus surface area. I should compare alpha sub j times 4 pi j with alpha sub b sigma t to the fourth. And just so we don't get confused, I want to be clear. This sigma right here is not a cross-sectional area. This is the Stefan Boltzmann constant. And finally, I just have the teensiest little detail to finish this thing up. And the teensiest little detail is that when I was adding up all the intensity coming in over a surface from all angles to get the total energy flowing in, I didn't quite do that right. The emergent flux going in or out is actually equal to pi, the black body function, or your mean intensity, d nu. So what do I need to fix here? I really should have put a pi over here. But this didn't propagate into our final answer because this is actually how the Stefan Boltzmann constant is defined. So, so this pi error was already absorbed in this sigma. So we don't need to change this. But it does mean that we need to drop a 4 as we integrated up the mean intensity. So with that little fix, we can now say that t is equal to alpha j over alpha b. This is comparing the extinction coefficients averaged over the band that you're, you're receiving radiation and the band that you're emitting radiation. Pi over the Stefan Boltzmann constant times the integral of the mean intensity over frequency to the one fourth. So that's what we have. In radio equilibrium, with a background intensity that's tied up in this J factor, it's all the background light, you can convert that into the final temperature that you'll end up at via this equation when we're in thermal equilibrium. Now, if we're not in thermal equilibrium, then you can do useful things like estimate the time scale for heating as, say, the energy density of your gas, where this is just the ideal gas law compared to the energy coming in, which we established was 4 pi alpha sub j times j. So here we're comparing the energy per volume required to heat up a gas to a temperature T compared to the power per volume that's flowing in from the radiation. And the reason this has units of volume and not per surface area is because this extinction coefficient here has units of inverse length. 
So this is approximately the heating time scale. And similarly, if you wanted to look at the cooling time scale, if you shut off that radiation, you take the energy per unit volume of that gas, and you're radiating it out via the emissive process here is your extinction coefficient averaged over the emitting band of this, of the black body emission, of sigma t to the fourth. And again, these are time scales. Because of course, as you radiate off energy, your temperature of your gas will drop, which lowers the rate at which you radiate off energy. So you're going to have an, exponential, an exponentially decaying curve of temperature, but the time scale of that curve is going to be t. The same with the heating time scale, you'll asymptotically approach the equilibrium temperature. So that's radio of equilibrium.